See you in the NT. That's a cheeky top end marketing. Uh, Can you really just say done that? Done well. <laughs> exactly. It's, that's the thing. I kind of feel weird saying it. So, is that cheeky top end marketing well done or unnecessary profanity that's just put straight in front of kids and families? Yeah, what he's talking about is the latest Aussie ad campaign to mm. polarise audiences. So, we've got for tonight's Taking Stock John Winning, CEO of the Winning Group and founder of Appliances Online. And John Rolfe, Cost of Living Editor at News Corp. And I think pretty much everyone saw this because it was pretty provocative. Mm. There's a, a campaign by a particular councillor up north to have the whole thing banned. It's actually been around for a while. Do you, do you think it should be banned, John Rolfe? I find it so provocative that I'm actually split. Part of me thinks it's a bad idea and part of me loves it because it does point to the irreverence of the NT. It's why we love the NT news. Mm. There is something different about um, the top end to the bottom end, which is their, uh, their That's tagline. the other half of the slogan. Particular <laughs> one. So to me, it works at a certain level. Of course, it's their unofficial... Uh, well, it's, it's not their unofficial. It's got no connection at all to the NT government. And I think, you know, it, it serves a purpose. Uh, I, I think that this particular councillor is a bit of a stick in the mud. Mm. John? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think if it was... Uh if it was an ad campaign for my business, uh, people would be losing their jobs. Uh, <laughs> well said. I, I look at it and I think, you know, to, to think about the Lara Bingle ad not, not so long ago, certainly in my early mem mm -hmm. earlier memories, and, and I can still remember it, and people sort of getting up in arms about the word bloody. Yep. I won't even say this, <laughs> this yeah. play on words. Uh, I think that it's probably pushed the boundaries a little too far for mine. If I had kids, I would not want them to be uh, looking at it, certainly mm. if they could spell or, or read. And I do have God kids, and I wouldn't certainly be wearing a, a shirt to, uh, to my God kids' house to go and play yeah. in the backyard it's with them, or, or even out in public. I'd be embarrassed yeah. to have a shirt with this out it's in public. There's shirts, mm. you can go to souvenir shops, and it's, it's kind of oh, Tea towels, everything, that's so. the thing. And I don't think I, of myself as old school, but I know, you in this instance, John I think maybe in 30 years' time, <laughs> it'll be appropriate, but right now, I'd be offended. It's That's right, you're saying, right. won't somebody think of the children? John Winnie, right <laughs> here on Your Money Live. Um, no, it's interesting because, like, if you cast your mind back a few years, you'll remember this brand, French Connection United Kingdom, mm. and it, it was all over T-shirts and everything. It was FC UK. My mum wouldn't let me have one for sure. Like, just absolutely <laughs> not. I feel like it's the same sort of thing because, you know, it gets a lot of attention, right? It does, but I, I think the difference between the B word in the Lara Bingle campaign. <laughs> the, the F word is quite a big gap and then this word is much further Don't again. I think a lot of people are extremely offended by this particular you remember, word. You remember where the bloody hell are you? Tell me about another True. Tourism Australia campaign since. Yeah. I think it absolutely works and I wasn't offended by that but I think there's a big long stretch between the B word and then the next letter on the yes. alphabet word. Yeah. Well one of the views is, and look, the, this one particular um, at Northern Territory and reckons uh, snowflakes melt in the heat, so it sounds like you might be in that, <laughs> in that basket. Yeah, I'll but be there with you. One, okay. of the, one of the arguments they're making, and it's kind of something consistent if we were to go from a kind of a marketing um, perspective. Someone was saying, well, it's done more to put the top end on the map than a lot of um, federal government funded campaigns, which is kind of what you're getting to, John. So there's this boundless possible campaign, $1.5 million. Um, they say, you know, Canberra knows nothing about the NT, and the West has got the same issue, there was this um, blunder recently where there was a federal advertising campaign that encouraged people to catch the sunset from King's Park in, in Perth and in fact um, it was kind of all photographed wrong so it was kind of the sun rising in the east and then mm. here it is there and it kind of the, the perspective is all wrong because of course you'd actually watch the sun set in the west if you were in King's Park in, <laughs> in Perth so yeah they, they would just kind of say this just goes to the fact that um, the advertising campaigns that come out of Canberra and the way that Canberra thinks about the West and the Northern Territory, it, it just says it all. Yep. They're just not interested, they're not in on it at all. Well, look, risque for sure, absolutely. I, I, for me, if there's a criticism of this campaign, it feels a little bit, uh, it's uh, an NT campaign by the NT for the NT. Like it's yeah. sort of a pat on the back about how different they are. And, and they're how, all proud of that, it. Yeah, but yeah. snowflakes yeah. melt in the, you know, no, melt. Totally. So in the sun. So. It works for them. Yeah. The rest of us are sort of not so sure about that one. <laughs> yeah, what, what if we gave you a T-shirt for the next time you're on the show? Would you be proud to wear it? <laughs> I, if I had one now and I had to wear it at home, I'd, I'd just, yeah, I'd have, put to, a jumper on. I'd have to chuck it out. You'd have to put <laughs> yeah, on. The boss right. might have something right. to say about that, John. Um, look, m moving on, there was another interesting uh, piece of information that came out. Uh, consumer confidence. 
That tumbled 4.6% last week after yet another weak GDP read and the whole per capita recession uh, fury that we all were talking about frantically. Now, that sent Aussies into a bit of a panic. Overall, confidence is now at its lowest level since late 2017. And it was interesting, one of the sub-indexes in there, uh, the time to buy a household item, that dropped 3.8% in the last two weeks. Uh, so the question here is, are we, the media, driving sentiment lower than it ought to be? Or are consumers genuinely sig signalling uh, dark clouds ahead? Now, with regard to the household items, we've got to ask you, John Winning, because you know, you're know you in the business of selling household items. So do you notice this sort of thing when we talk about a big drop in sentiment around that sort yeah, of stuff? Yeah, I think we've had a similar... I think, we I think we've had similar questions in the past and, you know, I'm lucky enough to be, you know, in what is a large startup business. So we're seeing, you know, growth in the 20 to 30 percent range. So when we have a 3 or 4 percent swing, sure, maybe our growth goes from 28 percent to 25 percent. We can't put that down to sort of, uh, I guess, consumer sentiment. Where we do notice it is our commercial businesses. So we know that there are a lot less people buying and building new houses houses, that uh, business is in double digit decline, a serious decline. But in terms of people replacing their fridges, if your fridge dies, you need another fridge. For our appliances online business, it's just trucking with more and more replacement items. And for the winning appliances business, we generally sit in the premium to luxury end of the market. And I guess it doesn't matter whether you're in a boom or a recession, there's always someone making money and with money, and they seem to come and shop with us. Does it, does it aggravate you, though, when you hear, you know, last week the discussion is that we're in per capita recession? That's it, yeah. I mean, that got people, you know, people really fired up saying, this is not a recession, let's not give headlines to recession. I think that the media is responsible for a lot of hysteria, and I think that, um, unfortunately, the world we live in, fear and hysteria sells, and good news doesn't. I've always had this sort of sideline idea that I'd love to have sort of almost like a good news channel that just was out there spreading positive news. Unfortunately, the readership would probably be very low, but I would, I would sleep quite well knowing that at least I'm spreading a little bit of a positive message. I'm sure there are publications out there like this and many blogs that talk about the positives, and I think sometimes if the media was focusing more on the positive, we would have, um, I guess, less hysteria around things like this however it doesn't sell papers or, or get clicks in in uh, in online John we're talking to a cost of living editor over here what do you think about this idea of consumer confidence and time to buy a household item being very very low I think Australia uh, over reports economic news uh, I, I remember hearing the former Reserve Bank governor Glenn Stevens say that like nowhere else on earth we are we are studying every single twist and turn to a degree that ultimately is not helpful. And if you take the RBA for an, as an example, um, through all of the, the tumult of Trump and trade wars and Brexit, what's it done? Absolutely nothing. It has drawn a line straight through this and decided the best thing it could do was absolutely nothing. So to me, the media does contribute to both the, the downs and the ups. And when I saw a per capita recession, I thought that is reaching. Yeah. It is a joke. Yeah, it was a reach. We called that out. Um, but I, mean, I must say, then, in the other breath, we say, well, financial literacy is a problem in this country and mm. we, you know, we don't really understand stuff as much as we should. Isn't it good that we've got this ongoing conversation about the economy? Sure. Uh, I think there's financial literacy. Uh, it would be great if everyone had a better understanding of which debts they should pay off first, not be ahead on their mortgage and have a large credit card debt and are talking a lot about consumer sentiment. So I think it would be useful for there to be more discussion of things mm. that were practically helpful for people. Uh, I think there are some generally good trends in what people are doing with their, their debts. And that's a good news story, but you don't hear a lot yeah, about Yeah, a lot of it's actually ahead on our mortgages at the moment. We're yes. worried about house prices. Yes, but people have taken that opportunity of low rates to get well ahead. Yeah. We've got record low unemployment in New South Wales and Victoria, the lowest that has ever been recorded. So there are positive stories out yeah. there, and the media don't give them enough attention. I agree completely. Yeah, it's interesting. Earlier in the show, we were talking about uh, one of the rebates for older Australians is that uh, you can get a 50% rebate on buying a new fridge, say, and, you know... <laughs> I'm just guessing that that would be something that you'd like to get out there as opposed to, you know, a steep fall in... Yeah, I mean, I sell fridges, I don't know about a 50% rebate, but uh, it, it's probably there and people probably don't know about it. I yep. think that there That's are a lot of good news things that just don't get spread like like you mentioned. And I think that the government actually, in many cases, has done a lot that's good and 
I am you know, an advocate for many things that they do and I'm totally against many other things that they do but I can tell you the only thing you read about are the protests and the negatives and yeah. what everything that's going wrong with, with government and I think you don't hear about the low unemployment I think it's the lowest has been in yeah. over a decade. Mm. Right well to, to go from that into a possibly another bad news story here living on one of the world's most beautiful streets does come with a serious downside we're told which is an instagram plague now residents of rue cremieux and i apologize for the french pronunciation there that's in paris they're begging the city to close down their very pretty street which you're seeing there to visitors on weekends and evenings that's citing an invasion uh, of, of privacy from uh, social media troops. Now it takes a pretty nice picture, but what do you think? Should it be should it be closed down to the public, John Rolfe? Mm, I've got three suggestions here. <laughs> Firstly, this reminds me of uh, there was a story in the Herald last year, similar thing in Kirribilli, yes. where the the oh, lavender, lavender trees was drawing in a lot of the uh, Insta crowd. Uh, three suggestions. <laughs> You know when you get on a plane and suddenly you can't use your phone anymore? They've just shut off all yes. access. Why not? Sorry, no Wi-Fi, no service. No Wi-Fi. Yeah. So suddenly these people, they, they can't post to Instagram. <laughs> They'd be gone. Second suggestion, if any of you have seen the movie Amelie, French, uh, it's called gaslighting where you just mess with people's minds. So, you know, you just sort of make the chairs not level and loosen up a few pavers, some smells, <laughs> put them all off. And my third suggestion are the yellow shirts. You know, the protesters oh. over high fuel prices, get them in the street. In. <laughs> you won't have a problem with tourists oh, anymore. Yeah, I mean, well, well Practical information there. as always. Yeah. What yeah. your ideas? I guess uh, I, I'm probably slightly biased on this one because I have a house that looks like that street. So <laughs> ah. I actually got a, an artist to come and uh, paint paint a warehouse conversion that I've done and it looks very similar to that. So I leave my house almost every day with someone out the front either filming a video or taking a photo outside my house because of a, a famous artist. And Do you love that or hate it? No, it's why I did it. I actually had a friend of mine who is an artist, a musician, and he told me that it was criminal to have such a blank canvas surrounded by two parks without giving back to the local community and that I, uh, I needed to give back. So he helped me in uh, getting an artist to come out actually from Berlin. He was one of the guy, first guys, that, guy by the name of Thierry Noir, to paint the Berlin Wall alongside Keith Herring and he came out and spent three months painting uh, painting you know, coats and coats and coats of paint to brighten up my house and people absolutely love it so as much as I hate my house standing out so much and being a bit of a tourist attraction I actually love the feeling that I get when people are just blown away and taking photos of the house I think that the way to combat that is to allow more of this type of thing and that actually that street probably stands out from the rest and maybe more councils and towns should uh, get amongst it and I would love to see I'm in Surrey Hills I'd love to see more and more of Surrey Hills promoting more and more street art and then it wouldn't be the only house or the only big blank wall painted in, in the street and there'd be actually a whole uh, row of where I was uh, suggesting the light rail track where people on the light rail could follow that and look at different artists from local local artists and from around the world and I think it would be you know quite an iconic thing for people to come and check out in Sydney. I suppose that's the thing isn't it because in somewhere like Melbourne Hardware Lane it's all about that it's all art yeah. everybody's there to take pictures mm. constantly so and you don't have one cafe saying oh everyone's coming and taking photos of more because it's so big in Melbourne that there's so much to see that yeah. actually it spreads the, uh, the people and the tourists out whereas because this is all focused so heavily on one street they all go to this one area to get that one shot but um, I guess if more and more places um, became more and more beautiful or had more lavender trees <laughs> as yes. the case may be then maybe there were more beautiful streets to be photographed and it would yeah. spread them out. I do think to the social media types out there and the Instagrammers it's kind of like you know when you see the sign at the pub you know please consider the neighbours leave quietly mm. like a bit of respect goes a long True. way. True. I agree. Because some of these guys are dealing with you know hip hop artists doing videos for hours on end. That's yeah. true. People live there. You're just sending the yellow jackets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate it. John, John, thank you. Good.